Good morning, brothers and sisters, and uh, welcome to our Bible study, God's Forge with Pastor Jason Perry here in Panama City. In Panama City, where the heck is my head? In Johnson City, um, Tennessee. Um, the Crusader Mission is a church for veterans, first responders, patriots, and those that support them. Um, we are on day 16. Coming to you a little bit late today. Um, I hope you guys all had a great weekend. I hope that um, that you get to spend some time with the Lord, get to spend some time with your family, and um, and went to church on Sunday. Whether our church virtually in the morning, Linda, or you went to uh, a local church that you're invested in. Um, wherever you're at so um good morning patty so my, my um i had a, a pretty intense sermon this sunday um we went after the glaring problem of obesity in the church um and got some really good feedback from it um people seem to be receptive to the message I had a lot of heartfelt, um, a lot of heartfelt private communications. Good morning, Michelle. Uh, good morning, Steve. And, um, and a lot of encouragement from this Sunday. It was interesting because I telegraphed that I was going to do this, and I actually got my first criticism and attack from a, a text message from a number I didn't know who from Philadelphia. You know, kind of interesting. Uh, 215 number. So I didn't have a name attached to the number. And, um, and they shared like a screenshot of some, I don't know, it was weird how they shared it. But anyways, I'm happy with how it went. Um, I think God's voice, you know, was a part of it. And um, now it's time to drive on. Now this week is our, um, is going to be our first, you know, we're starting in Matthew 1. So it's expositional teaching starting on Monday. I mean, it's this Sunday coming up. So Matthew 1-1, we'll get ready for it. All right. I hope, like again, I said, I hope your weekend was great. We are in chapter 16 where Sarai, Abram, Hagar make a mess of things. And um, well, I will read it first and then. You know, it's the beginning of a lot of trouble. So let us begin. Well, first, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we... There we go. You guys can probably hear me better now. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you now um, hungry for your truth. Uh, Lord, we are here to do one thing, and that is to know you, know your will for us, and to know your word. So, Lord... Um, Magnify my words that are of you and silence the words that I say that are not of you and or draw everyone closer to you so that they may serve for your glory and your glory only. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's get into Sarai and Hagar, Genesis 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abram had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, to Abram her husband, as a wife. And he went into Hagar and, he, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarai said to Abram, may the wrong done to me be on you. <laughs> I gave my servant to your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, behold, your servant is in your power, 
to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found her by the spring of the water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur, which is on the way to Egypt. And she said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress, my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a donkey of a man, his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over, or dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are a God of seeing. For she said, truly here I've seen him who looks after me. Therefore, the well was called Berlai Roy. Berlai, oh, here we go. Bir Lahai Roy. It lies between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar, Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. So there's a couple of things here that we have to understand. Um, the line of, uh, of, Ishma of Ishmael is going to be a line of conflict. Um, when, so basically Sarai told Abram that go marry my servant and that I may have children through her. During the time of the code of Hammurabi, in this custom, attested so far by the code of Hammurabi and text of Nurs and Nimrud, the authority over the children resulting from this union belonged to the chief wife, Sarai, not the slave wife, Hagar. So Sarai was trying to get her to basically foster children. Um, the term liquid contempt is not actually a good translation. The word here is curse. The Hebrew word here is translated to curse because she treats Sarai with such to saying Hagar is alienated from the family of blessing. Um, so again, Hagar cursed Sarai. Um, but what I find interesting is this was all Sarai's idea. And of course, she turns and blames Abram right away. May the wrong done to me be on to you. Sarah lays responsibility for the situation upon Abram. And the narrative suggests that all parties share responsibility for the tense situation that develops. Obviously, um, taking things into your own hand when God has promised you something, um, probably not the best thing. May the Lord judge. She appears to a still higher court. And then, um, and then in 16.6, when, when Abram, you please, according to the code of Hammurabi, the despised mistress Hagar, in this situation, could not sell her maid, or, or Sarai, could not sell her maidservant but she could mark her with a slave mark and count her among the slaves. Now, there's some debate, good morning, Brandy, on the angel of the Lord. Let's get into what our, what our scholars here say in the study Bible. The identity of the angel of the Lord is debated. According to some scholars, the angel of the Lord appears in many instances to be a theophany, a visual manifestation of God himself. So the angel of the Lord is sometimes distinguished from God in other cases. Hagar's remarks imply that she has seen God. Others, however, note that angel means messenger. They argue that a secular messengers that sec, that as secular messengers are fully equated with their senders, so God's angel is identified with him. Either way, God communicated to Hagar through the angel 
in this text. And the, I think the, the most important thing here is against everyone, 1612, the fierce, aggressive ways of Ishmaelites will leave a legacy of conflict. And this is going to spill over for thousands of years. So, again, another really uh, relatively short. <coughs> Pardon me, excuse me. Um, a relatively short study. Um, and God is about to step back into the scene in a, in a pretty big way with Sarai and um, Abram. So I hope you got something out of this. Um, I love doing these Bible studies. Thank you, Michelle. Um, and, um, and tomorrow we'll get into uh, Genesis 17. Um, again, we are uh, getting ready to paint the sanctuary here. So my schedule this week is going to be a little scrambled. Um, we've got a lot of work to do here for to try to get this place ready for the flooring to go down. And uh, man, we're going to figure out how exactly we're going to do that. So God bless you. We love you.